Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. Welcome back to the Peterson Technical Institute. Now, in today's video, which is tips number 650, I will be making a little brass plumb bob. Now, you may remember from the previous video that I was just given this nice selection of, uh, oh, it's a potpourri of tools, and I was rather smitten by this little brass plumb bob. So this will be a real quick project for me and for you if you want to make one. Oh, a one hour project. And I want to make it out of brass. I very seldom make anything out of brass. So I have come across some 7 16 hexagon, which is what this is. That show up? It's 7 16 but you can make it out of 7 16 round as well. Let's get started. A lot of the early plumb bobs were made of lead and the name came from the Latin uh, plumbum and uh, I'll put that on the screen here so you can understand that. That's before some of these other metals were available. It was just a nice heavy metal to make a plumb bob out of and that's where we get the word plumber from also because plumbers used to work an awful lot with lead. Well when I was in my prime I had quite a large selection of plumb bobs. This is really all I got left and it's just not a whole lot but in a video quite a while ago, a long time ago, I made this steel plumb bob. That was a three-part video numbers 49, 50, and 51 if you want to look back at that. That's a, a simple one to make. Remember you can make it out of steel or you know, whatever you come across. doesn't really matter but brass just is kind of a pretty metal isn't it? So I rooted through my brass box here and came up with uh, both hexagon 7 16 across the flat and some 7 16 round. I hope everybody knows what a plumb bob is used for. I'm not going to talk about that, but you can see that it's oh about two and a quarter long. That isn't too critical. Make it as long or as short as you want. And the included angle is 34 degrees. That seems to be kind of a common uh, angle, universal among plumb bobs, the ones I've checked. So we will set the compound rest on the lathe for turning that at half of 34, which is 17 degrees, and it's a pleasing angle. Also make a point of not making too sharp a point because you're just going to drop it, bend it, and be pouting about it. So leave it a little bit blunt. This one has been dropped. You know brass is just a very soft metal. And one more measurement that the round part is the radius, the ball is also 7 16 so just the diameter of the stock. The first thing I want to do is to put the ball on the end and I've already done that on the sample here. Pay no attention to that hole. That hole was in the scrap metal. In before I started. You don't want to drill any holes yet. The order of operation is semi-important. But how are you going to make a ball? Well I've shown that in several videos and I made this ball turning or I should say radius forming tool quite some time ago and I'm just reusing it. It happens to be the right size. You can make one easily enough. I'm not holding it in there just right. It'll be done like this actually. Like that. So if you want to go back and watch that video on how this is made, I'll uh, give you the link to that right now because I'm not going to remake it since I already have it. Very simple to make. There is the title. Look it up if you need to.
this neck here that it was created by the forming tool isn't quite wide enough as compared to the sample here. So I'm going to widen that just a little bit with a parting tool until it's 3 30 seconds wide approximately just for appearance and room to drill that hole Center drill. Three thirty seconds, half inch deep. You are in for a treat, and so am I. I very seldom use my little hardened speed lathe, second operation lathe. It's just perfect for uh, operations such as this. And I already have the compound set at 14 degrees, as I talked about a few minutes earlier. Take a look at the wonderful hardened engraving on the compound. And one thing I've already always liked about this little machine is that it's got the little magnifying glass there to uh, set the compound. So I'm set at 14. Not sure how well that shows up. Now you may need a special tool for cutting brass. Regular tools tend to grab. So I have prepared that one especially for this job. I'm not going to talk about it much but I am going to show at the end of the video a couple of still pictures from South Bend and I think one from Atlas and you can uh, read those short paragraphs to see what they say about turning brass so that it does not grab. Well, what do you think? That will take you a lot longer than an hour. <laughs> I like the natural patina. 
but here we got a combination so I am going to polish just a little bit you know I'm not much on polishing I didn't take it down to a point perhaps I should have taken just a little more than that but the brass point is so delicate this is a piece of used brass that has been banged around since time immemorial therefore even after I polish a little bit, there are going to be some uh, nicks and so on that are going to remain dark. I'm not going to worry much about it. Still got a little hole right here. A little burr I made to take off of that hole. That's all about putting the string in, you know, this way and then bringing it out and knotting it. And the neck allows a little bit of wrap around. That's the purpose of the neck. But, you know, they always made plum bobs pretty. Even 100, 200 years ago, they were just gorgeous. Some people collect them. All right, let me see if I can polish this up just a little bit on 320 grit on the phony bell saw honing device. That worked a little better than I thought it would, except of course for the nicks and the low spots aren't going to clean up. And this will not photograph well now that it is shiny. Alright, let's have a little extra credit. And that will be a, a second plumb bob being made out of 7 sixteenths round. Exact same operations and I'll speed it up so we go through that real fast. So we'll end up with two of these, so I'll meet you back here in about three or four minutes and I'll conclude the video. I cut off a piece of this heavy twine. It almost feels uh, waxy. I think it's for leather or something, but it's just the right size to go in there. I threaded it and then I just tie a knot or two. Probably one is enough. And cut it off with the clines. And there we go. And there's the round one. Of course, use any size that you can, but then make it longer or proportional. And there's the original. These really are just for display or for fun. Probably not so much for actual use. You'd probably make a bigger one. All right. This is Mr. Pete, your YouTube top shop teacher saying so long for now and I'll see you next time, okay?